Welcome to the Russell Hans Show. Okay, I got a two-parter episode for you. Brandon and I are going to talk about Sunday night's episode of Big Brother and what we are expecting from here on out. But first, we're going to dive into a few things Brandon is passionate about, and particularly the tattoo industry. I think you'll like this one because you'll get to hear something Brandon is passionate about. And also, we're going to make a very important announcement about the direction of the podcast. If you haven't signed up for the Patreon group, you can do that by going to patreon.com slash russellhands. We are releasing tons of bonus contents just for our patrons, including weekly episodes of Whining with Wine, audio commentary of Survivor Samoa, that's right, Survivor 19, and many episodes hosting Brandon. Plus, you'll get access to live shows and events. You can sign up for as low as $5 a month. Go to patreon.com slash Russell Hans. All right, here's part one of my conversation with Brandon. Another episode of The Bachelor, and I'm extremely disappointed. It was extremely disappointing, to say the least. We watched two episodes, two this was the third episode, I think. The third episode where, this is why we're pissed off, where they showed Kenny with a bloody eye, and then all of a sudden, we, everybody in the world is thinking that's watching The Bachelorette that Lee and Kenny gets into it, and that's how these networks do. ABC, you a bunch of bitches. Honestly, it was extremely, you, you had us on the edge of our seats for three episodes in a row. I was extremely excited to watch and you did exactly what you meant to do you wanted to keep your viewers Mm -hmm. interested when really there's nothing interesting about the show without those characters the thing is that they they needed three what three episodes to keep us interested with one thing happening one thing you know what happened when we found out what really happened and all they did was have a little uh what was that viking Viking fight with the wood uh shields and they cut their eye like that we turned it off yeah, I'm officially actually not into this show anymore. Done. We're done. I, you might love the Bachelorette thing that we do only because we're good, not because it's good. They just tried to bamboozle us, folks. And this podcast is real. We're real. We do real stuff. We don't want to be bamboozled. We want to be different than the rest. And that was bullshit. Yeah, I'm definitely boycotting anything Bachelor, Bachelorette. It's it's garbage. It's uh, false sense of hope for people who want to love you know it's garbage yeah and and, i mean i thought that there was we were debating it all week long two weeks you know who's gonna win the fight because they show them to arguing then they show if you ain't watching it if you're just listening to us right now what they do is they show lee and kenny in an altercation the entire time for three weeks and then they show uh kenny with a bloody eye so then all of a sudden you're like, oh, it goes down, a two episode, and to be continued and all that bullshit. You could tell they're just, they're, they're trying to, they're gasping for air to keep this thing interesting. And That's it, exactly what's happening. And it's, it's, it's honestly, it's, you're, you're being extremely uh, you're desperate. And you're then, desperate you know, and then you know what show. else they do? Then now they're so desperate they bring race into it. They, they, all these little uh, quotes that they're saying. And then, you know, first of all, Rachel's uh, choosing a white boy. You know, if she thinks she has a black struggle, I'll call her out too. She thinks she has a black, calling this, oh, it's the black uh, struggle or this or that, or what she said, whatever she quoted the other day. Uh, what did she say? It's about, hard being a black oh, It's hard being black. And then, you know, and then she's going to choose a white guy at the end of the day. That's disgusting. Yeah, it's it's garbage, and I think Eric's really starting to realize that. I think he's actually starting to yes. become disinterested in her. I think so, too. If she would be genuine in the first place and say, hey, I like white or black, it don't matter, but because she's probably expressed herself in that way to these black guys, it just makes it disingenuine, and I don't even want to talk about the show anymore. It's just garbage. Yeah, it's, you know, we turned it off. We straight up turned it off. So it's like, okay... Uh, we want to do something different. You know, we was going to talk about the show. I had all kind of notes on the show, and we was going to uh, break it down. And I'm like, okay, we got a good one now. I mean, I, shit. Look, I finally took notes, really, this time. Look at this shit. <laughs> For nothing. For nothing. I finally, you didn't even have to crinkle some paper to make it seem like Finally you took, notes took notes this time. <laughs> Lee and Kenny. Look, Lee and Kenny. Kenny uh, called Lee snake. a bitch. Call, look, Kenny called Lee a bitch. That's... <laughs> uh, <laughs> and guess what? There's nothing else to talk Lee about because they use leave. a bitch, it says. Oh, yeah, look, I, I shit, shit in your, your cowboy, cowboy boots. 
Yeah, that's it's sad, man. They they it, it's the Wazoo guy was great. His, oh, it's done, you man. Know, it's over. They had Wazoo. Lee was good TV. You know, uh, uh, Kenny and Lee together. It, I, we were waiting for that. We were waiting I for the fight. Understand. Me and Brandon's like, oh, who's the bitch? We'll find out who's the bitch. Me and Brandon's discussing it. We'll see who's right. Oh, I'll say I'm wrong if them two stand up and square up. I'll say I'm wrong, but that's Clearly, what they wanted us to think. we can come think. to the assessment they're both bitches. Yeah. That's, All talk, no, bo- no bite. Yeah. I'll bark, no bite. They're, they're both bitches. I mean, I, I... How can you watch something and then somebody bamboozle you and then you, and then you turn, tune back in the next day? How can you do that? It would have been it would have been different if they would have maybe did it for an episode, but for three in a row, yeah. come on! Like there's something going on. Like you're about to see the most epic thing that ever happened. No, you got to watch you Survivor know? to see that. Yeah. You got to watch Big Brother. You got to watch a Hans you getting taken watch. out the house because of head button <laughs> or or, or pouring out right. rice and beans <laughs> or pissing in their rice. You got to watch something like that, hiding machetes and burning socks. What we're trying to say is you got to have a Hans in general to make things spicy. Yeah, they try to make it all not, uh, all villainous type stuff and to where we'd get interested in it. Oh, they're going to fight. Oh, they're going to fight. And we should have known this was coming. Yeah, it was garbage, man. And uh, I'm, I'm moving on from it, to be honest with you. Yep, we're moving on. So we are no longer, because this podcast is so real, we are no longer going to going to do a podcast on The Bachelorette because we are not into being bamboozled. If we tell you something, it's the real deal. So we don't want to, We don't want you guys to watch something that, uh, that they're trying to fool you. We don't want our people to be fooled. I agree 100%. Back, back you up uh, 100% with that. I mean, that wasn't it? Didn't it make you a little upset that the, yeah, the fight didn't happen? I, honestly, I felt like... I, it was so stupid. It just I, I just felt like, all right, I'm done. At this point, when that didn't happen, I didn't care what happened, who won. I didn't care white, black. It didn't matter. That you know, race doesn't keep me watching a show. It's so overdone. It's like so when overdone. are you going to stop doing the race card? So you only kept me because of the fighting. I mean, that you, yeah. Well, it. they kept you because of uh, and, and first comedy, it was comedy. I mean, yeah, it was funny but you at take first. All that out, you take all the players out. You you literally have no personalities left. None. None. There's no personalities left. All it is now is who's better looking and who's got... You know what I'm afraid of? I'm afraid the race card is going to come in big time in, in the next couple of episodes. And we're not going to see it's gonna hap- We're not going to see it. No. And you know what's going to happen? Uh, ABC's going to run with it. They're going to grab a hold of that tail and they're going to run with it. And then they're going to cause conflict between blacks and whites all over again. They're just doing what people don't want. You don't want race involved in things, then stop talking about it. Stop bringing it up. Stop build, Stop fueling the hate that already is there. If you really want to change things, and they make the excuse, I guarantee you the excuse for the race card would be, we want to let people know that it's still relevant. No, you want people to watch it and then feed off of the anger that they feel so that they'll mm-hmm. watch it more. You're garbage. What? Fuck that's exactly what they, that's exactly what they're trying to do. They they say, oh, we have a problem with race, and we do. There is problems with race, but you trying to feed on it. You try to okay. We know that there's a problem with it, so let's let's make money with it. Let's make money with it. It's garbage, man. It it, it truly is. I, you know, I, I I disagree completely with what they're doing. They're honestly doing something that that is morally fucked up. You mm-hmm. know, the whole situation's morally just just not right. You know, and it so it starts with the little thing, guys. Just like, and it's not little when you try when they're trying to fool the audience. They are fooling you to believe something that's not real. They're either either the race card or either oh, there's a fight that didn't even really happen. I and then you, you know they have they have her running in the hallway. We didn't even see this part, but I'm just saying from the commercials. She, remember in the commercial, she's walking through the hallway all crying. They try to make that part of. The fight after the fight that was supposed to that you were supposed to think there's a fight. He has a bloody eye, and then she and in the next clip they show her crying and the thing. You know the only thing that was real this time, since I'm talking about uh uh which is Lee not Lee no, Kenny uh, Kenny. Kenny's the daughter. only thing that was real this time. Finally, somebody cried for a real reason. When you sit there and you see your daughter. On the other end of that, yeah. I don't care what kind of man you are. That that's tough. That's a a tough thing to do. And that was tears that was worth watching. Finally, and I legitimately felt for him as much as I don't like him in the show. 
I, I understand, you know, and anybody with a daughter or kids or anything like that understands what that love is. It's way deeper than this, this, this facade of love that they're having to endure right now. And she's such a bad fit for him and his family. I think it's just gonna, it's just so Dude, bad. She she's leading him on disaster. big time. She should have just cut him loose. He's not her type. And you know what? It's just garbage. She's uh, a, dis- she's a disaster. There's like, I can't wait to see this. I can't wait to see what happens with whoever she chooses and how long they stay get stay together. They're not staying together a month. If it's a month, what's the over under? Is it going to be over or under a month? What would you bet on? I bet that uh, it never works out. A month, over a month, or under a month? I say it doesn't work out in general. I don't think it's going to last. To tell you the truth, I don't think they'll be together f- uh, for no, a week. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't even give it that. There's no bet. There's not even a. I wish we could bet this in Vegas because I'd put some serious money on uh, a month, yeah, just, over a month. No I way. This. I'm still kind of shocked about how that turned out. It's really disgusting. You know what's? You know what's even more disgusting? That some of you guys probably see this too. She, she, she is all about looks. It, nothing else matters. Nothing. She. She, it's not about personality, and that's what sucks about this show. You know, uh, some people, some of the people that she sent home, like Fred, you know, that really cared for her and really liked her, you know, she just doesn't care about uh, any of the personality stuff. She's at 100% looks, and that's not how you judge. She's probably the, the most vain bachelorette you, you, you would ever, ever seen, and I haven't seen them all, but I promise you, <laughs> yeah, she is probably the worst. Well, we haven't By seen any, far. so yeah. <laughs> so, that's a good point. That's yeah. a good point. So yeah, she's the worst because we ain't seen any. <laughs> so she's probably the best too. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't know what to say anymore. It's kind of like a. It's one of those it's things where it's like, this, what this else can we sucks. say? Yeah, we got. Shows I mean, I got sucks. all this stuff. I took notes for days. You wasted our fucking time. Can Lee saying Jesus loves you? You see. Nothing. There's nothing juicy. I mean, you can't talk about. I can't. I mean, <laughs> can't there's, there's real notes. <laughs> real notes this time. So you know, what we're gonna talk about Brandon. I wanted to ask you a few questions about something you got going on. What's up, man? Brandon, I don't know if you guys know this, but he's a tattoo artist. Brandon, you, you, they can follow you on Twitter and your tattoo. Yeah, they can follow me on Twitter, man. Uh, at Han Solo. And uh, that's yeah. Hans Solo. Hans Solo. H a n t z s o l o. Keeping it real, like Han Solo. Star okay. Wars. It's a Star Wars thing. Okay. Uh, so you got a shop over there in uh, Crosby? Yeah, I work at a shop, uh, Republic Inc. in Crosby. Uh, a good friend of mine, Gabriel. He uh, he owns the shop, and he invited me out there. I've been tattooing now for about five years, um, in and out of different shops, and uh, went through an apprenticeship about five years ago, and. And uh, we we'll kind of worked my way into the industry. It's it's been extremely tough at times, but I'm finally starting to come into my own as an artist. Yeah, I got to say, you are. I'm starting to see his work get better and better. And the thing is, I hate to be the first person to get tattoos because you're learning. The people that learning, you know, you don't want to get a tattoo from somebody that's just started into a week. Do you agree? I 100 percent, man. <laughs> I remember the exact day I was in my apartment. I, uh, did you I do I, yourself or something? I tattooed myself. My first tattoo ever was on myself. Let me see it. it Where is it? Oh, it's covered up, man. That's, what was it? It, it was an eyeball. <laughs> it was an eyeball. And it just, yes. it looked about what you can imagine. It, uh, it looked like a circle and then a circle inside a circle. And, and I just filled that bitch in with a color. It was blue. Yeah. I just filled it blue in with eye. a blue eye. And I was like, damn it. Why can't I get, you know, the contrast in this eyeball? <laughs> You didn't have no shade, no white. I didn't white. have shit. <laughs> I didn't have shit. I bought a little, uh, they, they call them tattoo kits. And you know, at that point, I was still calling my machine a gun. And I didn't have any of the lingo. All I knew was, was a bunch of nice tattoo artists. And I, I knew, you know. I we know some good conventions, ones. And I went to all that. And I started judging them. And I thought, hey, this is just going to be real easy. Just jump in this thing. And I'm artistically inclined. And, and it was just a brutal So waking. would you say... If like you have an artist, an extremely good art, like somebody that you would God given artwork, because they have a girl that played Survivor. She so shows some of her daughter's artwork. Uh, I seen that. I, got I seen a, a picture. You seen of, that? Yeah, it was, it was really and good. It is phenomenal. So what I'm trying to say is, I, I think it's Jessica or uh, I know who you're talking yeah, about. Okay, so so her her daughter's work is phenomenal. So I'm like, man, maybe you could work for the podcast. When I seen it, so. 
It's just because she can draw. Does it? Would that make her a good tattoo artist? Uh, absolutely not. The 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 really people don't understand how hard it is to apply a tattoo the proper way. It's application. Ninety percent of your tattoos application. You could be the best artist in the world, but apply a tattoo the wrong way, and that's when you get infections and digging in too deep. And you got to know the layers of the skin. You got to know skin depth, and you got to know the angle of your machine. You got to know what colors and, you know, contrasting So colors when you started, and, you didn't know none of that? Nothing. I thought it was just like just you would drawing. imagine. Just, draw, oh, like draw just drawing. Like drawing on a piece of paper. And I'm good at drawing, man. Let me, let me just do this. It is, guys, it's literally five years in, and I'm just starting to feel comfortable with my work. And that's... Do you it. ever put something on somebody and it was like, oh, fuck? Oh, God. So many times. <laughs> I put people in the hospital. What? And my exes, man, they had the worst... Worst time, they got it bad. What? Fortunately, my fiance, so what, what do you have to do to, to not put them in the hospital? Like you're talking about more oh, clean stuff. No, no, no. It's not even. It's yeah. It's, you know, you want it, sterilization and stuff like that. Is extremely important. Right now, I'm using disposable stuff, so mm -hmm. I don't use. Back in the day, man, I just thought you know I could just drop this thing in some alcohol. Uh -huh. and, you know, that's just real talk. Wait, so mean, you can't do that? No, no, hell no. Oh, you I thought you could do that. No, you need an autoclave and. And you know, it's just not, it's not how that, that works out at all. Um, uh, disposables is now what people kind of fall to because you don't have the higher risk. It's a less risk of, of infection and stuff like that or being pass, passing something that you really don't want to pass. But, um, just in general, I'd say I, it's, it's really all about application, man. Tattooing is, uh, 90% application, 10% creativity. And that's I, that's what I believe as a tattoo artist, man. My creativity is there. If I don't apply that right and properly into somebody's skin, I'd say ninety percent of people would a tattoo artist would agree. You know, if you can't apply it, you know, you can't do it. You can draw all day, but you know, and people got to understand. Look, if you can draw it with a pencil, that's great. But the thing about a pencil, it has an eraser. Right. So if you can't draw well, you it with can, a pen, then you probably can't tattoo. Well, you that. can get you can nowadays. I could take it off, but I hear it's extremely. Uh, yeah, but you don't want to bank on that kind of stuff well, as a could tattoo you, artist. It's not. Yeah, did you smart. ever think about getting like you know the the whole laser removal stuff? So in your shop, you could tattoo and you can take them off. If I mean, I, I don't know how expensive. I don't know. Them, but that I, see, that's that's extremely contradictory to what you're doing. You want people to have the 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 whole motive and the, yeah, you don't want to have purpose, that in your yeah. shop and they'd be like, oh, why is are that you for, here? You know, you trying to monopoly to, the whole thing? Like, oh no, they'd be like, oh, so is that is for the one you fuck scheme? up on me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you want when people come into our shop, we have a custom shop. We don't have any flash on the walls. We do everything. Um, every, no one walks out of a ta our tattoo studio without something that is their own, you know, whether it's, Hey, I want this on the internet. Well, let us change it. Let us, we want people come, leaving our tattoo studio going, you know what? I have a original piece and you know what? This thing is beautiful. We don't want them to think, Hey, you, you got a tattoo here and now, you know, go cover it up because we screwed up the application. We screwed up. We don't, we don't, you don't like what you have. So our first priority is to make sure that people leave our tattoo studio happy. Does anybody ever re recognize you? Yeah, man. Um, I don't know if he's watching. Is that a but awkward? It was, he was a couple states away. Okay. And uh, he came to Houston, and he showed up at the shop, and he just sat there and watched me tattoo. Really? Asked for a picture. Uh, so you had some a fan come in there just to watch your tattoo? Yeah, yeah. That's was, pretty cool, actually. It was actually it was cool. He was a nice guy. Did he get he a tattoo? His girlfriend? No, he just wanted to hey, be there. He just what you do there. is you come here. And take a little vacation and get a tattoo by Brandon Hans. That would be pretty cool, I think. Yeah, it's cool. I've had, I've had, uh, I've had, I've tattooed fans before, but you know, it's, um, it, it's kind of crazy because people do come in and they're like, "Hey, we heard somebody's fam famous is here," and I'm like, "What? What do you mean? Number one, I'm not famous uh, by any means, but you know, the whole Survivor thing helped out a lot because people, you know, do want to say, "Hey, I got a tattoo by that guy who threw all the rice and beans everywhere," yeah. and this tattoo is no, badass. Cool. Yeah, you know, it's that cool. would be cool to get a tattoo. What we're gonna do was talking about it earlier is uh, with with me, uh, Hannah, Haley, my twins, Michael, my son, my baby girl, Gracie. We're gonna do a tattoo. I'm gonna let Hannah draw it, and uh, so it, she'll be part of that process. And it's gonna be a heart like this. I just drew a heart, and then it's gonna have like, I don't know, like a, a puzzle piece, kind of like this. You know, I'm drawing a little puzzle piece. And then this part of the heart, the puzzle, this will go on one of them. And then they'll have a puzzle piece like this. 
this will go on some you see yeah you know no, I, mean? I, I get the idea it's just gonna be a and then all all five of us are gonna have from that heart that H hannah draws uh, and of course, when Michael and Gracie gets older, they'll get the other puzzle puzzle pieces that's left. That's awesome. Man. So, so when we're all together, it's puzzle pieces of a heart. And 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 it, it's it's that's that's the cool thing about it, man. Is is uh, uh, tattoos are awesome, man, because you don't ever you, you'll never forget what they're, they're what they're what the meaning is. You got to have meaning behind a tattoo. If you're gonna get a tattoo. Make it mean something. I screwed up my first tattoos because it was this one on my shoulder. What's this line. one was good because of the cross. I wanted that meaning, but this one right here, you know what's crazy? That means in, absolutely nothing. In, in my career, I like they keep hope alive. I thought it, 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 you know, just starting in my career, I thought that that tattoo was so spectacular. In my mind, really? I thought, this man, if here? I could only do something like that, no, if I could only do a tribal armband, I'll be right where I want to be. No, bro, I'm, not, I'm looking at realism now, and oh, I'm looking no. at this is, kind, this is uh, you know, that's decent. That's decent. Yeah, that's yeah. that's not this like one's this. good. I think it's my uh, angel. Mark. It just—it's just crazy it's just how your light. perspective changes whenever you learn new see the things, feet? and yeah, the little band, yeah. I, I mean, definitely see it. Yeah, uh, it's uh. So you thought that was good? Back yeah, then. back in the day, man, I thought that was good. Now I'm just like, I, when someone comes in and they try, yeah, I, I would if someone came in with that, I'd be like, all right. So how do you want me to cover that up? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, all the time, man. Hey, how do you all want right. me to cover it up? And uh, not to make you self conscious about your tattoos. No, no, I, I've I got a lot like, of tattoos I mean, like that. I don't mind it. I'm not saying I it's mind a memory. it. I don't mind it. It's a memory. One of my four, first tattoos, but I surely wouldn't do it uh, if I had had to do it over. And you have decent tattoos. You know, stick yeah. to you have do you have a lot better than most people. What I'm gonna do is I want to put this one together on my left arm. Mm -hmm. I want to put a, the sun up here on my shoulder. Let it come because this is hell. Yes, I got sir. a hell heaven themed tattoo. Uh, the fire comes up from my uh, my wrist, and at the top I want sun to shine down. And then I want this to be all blue, like a sky with little birds flying. Yeah. So this is like heaven and hell, like a, a hero versus villains type tattoo. Yeah, man, it's it's actually a really cool tattoo. Um, a good friend of ours, CK, did it, and uh, it's extremely. Wasn't well he done. on uh, one of the shows? He was on Ink Master for a short time. Okay, he was Ink there Masters. for he was there for an episode. Um, and it's just unfortunately, you know, that it, that goes back to production. It had nothing to do with his tattoo level. It He's was, really good. It was really good. Oh, one of the best, honestly, one of the best and, um, extremely talented. Uh, he's, I have a lot of work on me. Uh, what, uh, and, and you know, what's surprising to people, Russell. And I think the, the shock factor, say we do end up on survivor again mm -hmm. one day, hypothetically, right? Um, people, just the shock in how I look versus how I looked my first season. Right. Answer that for me. Do Can you, you think, imagine? Do you think that uh, you would be judged differently? Because right now, Brandon has face tattoos as well. So do you think because of that, you'd be judged differently? I think I wouldn't be looked at as, oh, this guy's a Christian anymore. Like he gave up on his faith and all this stuff. Well, your face tattoo is of three crosses. Yeah, but I think it, it gets, or or I guess they would think that I'm a little bit less conservative so than I was. So do you think that because you have a tattoo, the Christian community looks down upon that? Man, dude, uh, I'd have to say absolutely 100%. I think that the real, real, fa you know, I'd say real Christians. What's the difference? I'd say people who really love Jesus. They don't mind it. Right. You know, they're like, you know what? Who cares? Who are we to judge? You know, mm -hmm. who are we to judge? We carry these, you know, sinful tattoos, metaphorically speaking, all day, every day. What's the mm -hmm. difference that has been on his body? Yeah. So, you know, those type of people I can really embrace and love and appreciate. But yeah, dude, there's so much hypocrite, so many hypocrites out there nowadays about the whole thing. And guys, I want to express something. I do not suggest people getting face tattoos. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm invested. This is something I'm going to do for the rest of my life. This is my business. This is what I'm going to, that what I support my family on. I'm a full time tattoo artist. I make good money. I make great money. And I, you know, I'm, I'm good at my craft, you know, and a lot, a lot of improvement needed, but I, I've, I've worked my ass off just to get to where I'm at. And, uh, I have so much, and again, I want to emphasize, I have so much to learn and I'm by no means awesome. Um, but I'm confident what I could do. Man, you might be able to get on a, uh, that show. One, one day, Masters. one day, I'll say a couple of years, I'd be, I'll feel more comfortable with it, but. Um, like I said, I'm just still trying to find myself in the industry. And to be honest with you, man, uh, 
like I said before, I don't suggest any face tattoos or anything like that. If someone comes in the shop and asks for a face tattoo, if I don't see that they're 75% of their body is mm-hmm. covered first, guys, my whole body from head to toe is covered in tattoos. You can't barely see any skin on my torso. My back, there's no skin left. My legs are tattooed. I have two full sleeves. I My body is 75%. So if somebody comes in there fresh, no tattoos, and they want something on their face, would you do it? I'm not tattooing you. And that's not because I don't think you need you have free will. I'm not going to do it because I know what's going to happen. Yeah, I know that you're going to look like an absolute idiot, mm-hmm. and I'm going to be the guy who screws up your career. You, you're not a tattoo artist, and do you want to work at Petco for the rest of your life? No. It's just not happening. Yeah. But it is becoming more accepted. Tattoos, but back uh, then, back in the day when I was, you know, ten years old. Of course, so. everything's more acceptable, but but in reality, man, uh, uh, people aren't going to respect you the same way they would unless you give them something. Right. And sometimes they don't, anyways. But if you can tell them, hey, I'm a tattoo artist, like, oh, that's why. Other than that, they would have thought you spent time, right? You know. Well, you see, uh, if you want to come get a tattoo by Brandon Hance, then come over here to Crosby. He Republican. has his little shop that he that he does a. His tattoo work in, uh, name of the shop, Brandon? Republic Inc. Crosby. Crosby, right there. Come over here, get your tattoo. And uh, The Bachelorette, you're dead to me. Dead to me. We're done. We're done with you. So uh, next thing we're going to do here, uh, Brandon, what do you think about watching the, uh, Big Brother and doing I'm down. I'm actually, I, we were talking about that earlier, and it uh, that makes, it, and it's, it's, it's always It's more in our wheelhouse. Yeah. You know, it's more in our wheelhouse. It's more of a strategic. It's our brother. Physical. It's our brother's show. I mean, we're yeah. we're kind of all a family, a big family. We're, we're alumni of CBS reality. So, so we are switching gears, folks. No more Bachelor, Bachelorette. We're done with that. That's just not our uh, cup of tea. And we are going to start on Big Brother, Big Brother nineteen. I already started a few of them. I have Rachel out there. I have Judd out there, and uh, we'll get it going. All right, here's my second part of my conversation with Brandon. This is about Sunday night's episode of Big Brother 19. Yeah, I was actually pleasantly surprised. I enjoyed watching Big Brother tonight. And uh, it's just a, a whole different ball game of the production. I mean, ABC to CBS, there's no comparison. Yeah, and uh, it's it's pretty exciting, I think. You know, right off the bat, we have Josh. This is how it starts. Josh is telling... Uh, uh, talking to someone, consoling them about not crying. Now, the crybaby himself is telling others not to cry. You know, it's kind of, I don't know what to think about that. I, Josh is the, the bigger guy, right? Josh is a big guy from Miami, the one that sells hair products. But, I mean, dude, I have mad respects for him because of the fact that he had a sad story. <laughs> like, no, he hit me hard. No, that wasn't Josh's story. That oh, was you're talking Josh- about Miami. Okay. Yeah, Miami, big boy. Yeah, yeah I can't Miami. really. I, I'm. There's a lot of swell dudes in this, uh, and Josh is definitely not. Yeah, one what you're talking about is I, the story that uh, Cody who was that. Co- was that Cody? Cody. Cody, yes, Cody, Cody, Cody and Josh. Cody's story when, hit me hard when Josh is upset because he ain't going to see his dad till October, and then uh, uh, it wasn't Cody. No, it was that was Mark. Mark. Yeah. Mark. Mark yeah. So Mark. Was like, oh, you ain't gonna see your your family till October. Well, guess what? I never get to see mine. Yeah, that's that. That was tough, man. Just just seeing him almost break down. He was extremely, extremely. Uh, he, he just was vulnerable, and you can tell, man. I, I, uh, I, I kind of felt for him. You know, I don't know what it feels like to not have a parent. Well, like that's that, what but. it is. You know, you get when once they do that and they have that moment, it's like, wow. Uh, well, you get to see your parents, and I don't. You know, think about that for a second. You, you know, suck so. me in on that one, Mark. You suck me in on that one. You have a fan now. Uh, Josh, on the other hand, I think he's hilarious. I think the fact that he's so paranoid, I think he he'll, self- paranoid. he'll self-destruct big time. I think he's fun to watch because he's so, like, he's so up and paranoid. down, up and I, down, up I, I and don't, down. I've never played with somebody that paranoid in, every, in three seasons of playing besides myself. Yeah, <laughs> but but what what about you? Have you ever played with somebody that paranoid? I mean, that dude I mean, is. I feel like I was in the same boat. I mean, that paranoia creeps up on you hard, especially on Survivor. I don't know what it's like to play Big Brother, but Survivor has got a different feel to it. You're suffering. They're they're yeah, not and really I think, suffering. You know what I think happens? Because not right now we have three showmances in the house. We have uh, Jessica and Cody. We have Matthew and Raven, and we have. Who else is it? Who else? And, and it's Co- it's Mark and Elaine, Elaine Elena. And that, let yep. me be honest with you. Unless, and I'm sure HOHs will will change things and 
uh, POVs and all that stuff. But I see their final six right there. That's your final six. Oh, the showmances? Yeah, that's oh, your final no. two, four, six. Kevin's not in that. I'll, I'll, I'll play some money. Uh, aside from play some money, I ain't got any money. But mm-hmm. Kevin's gonna, not in that. I'm going to bet I, no way, 100%. Dude. You know what's going to happen? You know what's going to happen? And like I said, in, unless POVs and HOHs. Somebody's going to win something. Yeah. Something's going to happen and, shake and throw a wrench in that party. They're going to put Mark. They're going to put Cody and Matthew all on the block at the same time. That's going to happen. That's tough, man. That's tough. I, I, I could definitely see. I want to see Kevin win this whole thing. And I hope that he is one to throw a wrench Look, in I'll I tell you something. And I, I said this from the very beginning, from our very first thing when we were uh, profiling these people. And think about it for just a second. Dominique. Nobody is even, she ain't in nobody's radar. I didn't even she, see her. Mm-hmm, she, and she's like that in the house too. She is going to sneak her way all the way to the end of this game. Yeah. Uh, my least favorite, I'd have to say, is going to be Elena. What about 100%. Jessica? Jessica, she doesn't annoy me as much, but Elena's just got this terrible attitude. Terrible. I don't like Christmas. I thought I'd like her a little bit more because she just. Yeah, I don't really like was, Elena. I'm not liking Elena. I don't like Christmas. My favorite's Paul. Paul's my boy. Is he? No, 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 my favorite. But he's my, out of the out of all the macho men, Paul's going to be my oh, favorite. Oh, my 100% favorite is Kevin. 100%. Close, close, close tie for me. The reason I like Paul is just because you could tell his ex- expertise. Like, playing the second time season of Survivor, it was completely different than playing the first time. And you could tell, you know, I could relate to him. Hey, man, this guy's got this. He's got the bull by the horns. He knows what's going on. He knows the feeling. He's taking chances. I think he's going to go far in the game. I do think they're going to get smart right. and vote him out. So we have – here we go again, Brandon. Here we go again. We have Jessica. She's talking to a group of people, and she's and Paul's standing there, and she says a reference to Panda Panda. Was it Panda Panda or Pow Pow? pow, pow. And then she, what happened was uh, somebody that played the game before, they called her Pow Pow. And she, uh, I guess, looked like that person. So Jessica's calling her Pow Pow. And then Megan thinks that she calls her a panda. You see? So now all of a sudden, uh, Megan goes up to Alex and says, hey, because they're friends. And that's what she thinks. She, I really think that she thinks she heard someone say that. And she's like, hey, uh, you know. Jessica's over there calling you uh, a panda. She was grasping for air. That's it. She was. Yeah, trying. but I think she heard that. I, no, I do think she heard that. But when you're in that defense mode and you're in that, what can I do to survive? When you see, even see the hint of but I can you know survive I, this. You know what I've noticed the most about that whole situation, and that uh, nobody else is talking about is Paul. Paul is the one that went up to Jessica and told her. Paul is the one that just stirred up that whole racist mess. Yeah, that's the thing, though, man. He's just playing because he's played he's before. He's played before, and he, he knows the game. He's playing, he's trying to... But why would you stir up stuff when you know she's gone already? But that's the thing, is look clearly what's happening. She's not just gone. Now someone else has to go. Yeah, so now they sit there and they bully somebody. Bully her, bully her, and she thought she heard that, and she was going to her friend, Alex. That was her friend. That was her alliance, and she was telling her alliance what she heard. I kind of feel sorry for Megan because... She was just telling her alliance what she thought she just heard. Somebody, uh, you know, be in their opinion, it being a racist comment. So, you know, then then Megan gets all, I mean, Alex gets all upset and calls her out in front of everybody. Now Megan's gone. She goes to the diary room. Something happens. We don't know what happens. But now she's out the game. But guess what, guys? Since y'all bullied her right out the game, now one of you are up. And you thought for a second that, oh, well, we're not going to have to deal with this week. You got to anyway. So now it's going to be double the trouble. And uh, well, what's just cool, the cool thing about it is, is I didn't like Megan. I thought it was sad what happened to her, but I didn't like her. I thought she was annoying. And I thought that she wasn't good for TV in general. She's just not a good personality. She's a pretty dull person. And then Kevin's like, he worries, he starts worrying about That shows who he really is as a person. He starts worrying about her because he's like, you know, she's been in that room for two and a half hours. I wonder if, you know, uh, when something happens to one of my daughters, I always send him a mojo or something. <laughs> Hashtag mojo. That was pretty fun. I, I like him, man. I really Isn't do that like a him. drink, like in I, the Bahamas? I think he's the most chill, 
cool guy. Mojita. He's the type of guy that you would want to hang out with after the show. That's the type of cat that you want to oh, be friends with. He's, yeah, he's the kind of guy Wisdom. you can go out and hang out with, and you're just laughing the whole time. Yeah, but he, he you could tell he's old school, and he, he man, he's, he's got a lot of knowledge. I mean, he's been through some life. You could tell he still has that, but he's still got his cool about him. Now, Cameron, on the other hand, was a shocker. Him getting voted out right off the bat. Do you think they should have went for, because they could have went for their strong no, girl? No, but I think that it's great, because he reminds me of Kyle. Cochran and Ian and people Whoa. who don't deserve to win don't anything in life to be there. other than a math quiz. Right. It just doesn't make sense because those kind of guys make me mad worse than I disliked Cameron more than I disliked the big lipped girl. Uh Elena, the Elena. one that's got huge amounts of what is it? What do they call that? Ass. Co- collagen. <laughs> she said ass. Huge <laughs> amounts of it. The collagen <laughs> is literally she cries collagen. Like, she probably cries her collagen. But anyway, I, I disliked Cameron more than I disliked her just to the fact that I had to deal with a weasel, Cochran. And and now, I feel like he was too. It's crazy because we had our opinions on the, all these cast members from the get-go. Now, look, look at Jason. I mean, I hated Jason oh, from yeah. the get-go. Now it doesn't seem like it's so bad. He seems like a good guy. He honestly, I'm Jason, pulling for Kevin and Jason, really. Yeah, Jason, man, I want to say I completely misjudged you. I thought the handkerchief had something to do with your sexual he has a He has a handkerchief right here on I'm this sorry. picture, too. Yeah, like, and, just, and the color, you, you like bright colors. I get it. <laughs> You don't have anything to try and impress or anyone to impress. He's I get married. It. I get it now. You're a faithful guy. Who cares what everybody thinks in your house? I apologize. I was wrong about right. you. You don't. You're not gay. Hashtag mogos. Ha- mojo. So Mo you and Kevin goes, are yeah. definitely sitting pretty with uh, with with me and, and and as far as you know, the game goes. Uh, I don't think you guys are gonna last long. I think Kevin has more of a chance to last long, but. Just because it's it's just kind of a popularity contest right now, unless you know, like I said, POVs, HOH, that can change stuff. Mm-hmm. So, so the funny whole thing, funny about the Megan, uh, you know, getting however it happened. I think she quit, but that's just my opinion. Uh, the whole thing about that is now all these people bullying her. Uh, you know, they're they could be on the block. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. Um, let me see. I'm thinking. I mean, all just like the the couples, man. I think it's going to be the final six is going to be couples. No, I, I will hate to see that. I will it, hate it, that. It would. It would. Oh, what if Paul throws a wrench in there? Well, what happened here Ooh. is we had the den of temptation thing that went down, and mm. I'm not happy with this. I'm not comfortable with this. All of a sudden, Paul gets the the. Uh, who's to say that America is not the one voting for that? Who's to say that the production didn't give it to him and then said, "Oh, guess what? You got three more weeks for free. You're here you go. Into you got quite three the weeks." Cons- to- you theorist. got you got three weeks to, without being on the block, and then you get to pick somebody that gets on the block without even knowing. Right? Yeah, I, I just I, I I think aside from the conspiracy thoughts, uh, I would say that Paul uh, definitely could have been picked because it's not like America doesn't like him. I would yeah. I would think that's the most no, realistic. Yeah, well, he, he, I would think Kevin would have got picked. He got picked to come back. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So there you go. I mean, simple simple as that. But I will say. If it's kind of shady, though. It, it's a little shady. But it is. It is. I can agree with it. But I think, honestly, I think Paul would be the guy to throw the wrench in there. If anybody. He doesn't care about any of this. He wants to win. It's not about who he's dating in the house. And clearly, you can oh, see that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because guess what? Christmas is available. But we and nobody, don't. And he ain't messing with her. Oh, Christmas isn't available. She's got a girlfriend at home. Well, I'm just saying, she to in this game, she's available, it's, and she's not messing with It's her and Paul's Julie. Paul's not messing with uh, with him. With uh, Paul's not messing with her. So he's actually playing it. He knows that, dude, I just don't think these showmances. I think these showmances are in a bond, especially... Cody, Cody and, and yes, uh, yes. Cody and Jessica. Cody and Jessica for that, sure. He doesn't like Jessica. Yeah. He doesn't like Jessica. Yeah. Because I've been watching some of the live feeds, guys. You and know he, what? And he turns turns away from her. She's all up on him. And he's always like. That. He said it himself. He doesn't like showmances. He yeah, said well, it himself. Yeah, he said it here, but they all, they've been cuddling uh, with each other for the, the last few days. And he is not into her. He's just not. And I I seen him more into Alex today than he was uh, Jessica. Now let me say I agree one hundred percent. Pow Pow is hardcore. A I think That's she's racist, she's though. no. It's I didn't say panda. <laughs> I didn't say panda. I said Pow Pow. Okay. Okay. 
Pow Pow is extremely aggressive, extremely good competitor. She's more made for Survivor than she is for Big Brother because she has this I don't give a shit attitude. I'll just win the challenge. Well, it's not like that. That just doesn't You got to be kind of a popularity. You got to be popular. And you don't give a shit about being popular and that's probably yeah, bitch I, kick out of the Yeah, game. no, she did that's terrible gameplay what she did. Oh, I don't do anything but I do what I want to do. Well, guess what? Don't tell the guy that that can, can put you on you. the block you know, lie to him. Tell him something else. Don't say, hey, if I get HOH, I'm going to put you and your boys on the block. I mean, yeah. that's cool when you have power. You know, that's great. That's fine. You, that, like I, she I, wants I'm, to be shown up as a strong woman. I get it. But that's this is a game for half a million dollars. Be weak sometimes. Being weak in this game is being strong in this game. Yeah, I, saying. I I uh, I agree, but I can definitely see how she has this. You know what? She sees it. When you walk into the house, what do you think people are looking at? All the couples and relationships. So right off the bat, your morale is like, oh, crap. What am I going to do? I don't have somebody to cuddle up with that shouldn't night. Shouldn't that worry? I mean, shouldn't that worry Kevin and Jason that they got all these showmances? They've, they mentioned it in their conversation today. He said, look, you see them all over yeah. there on the hammock? Mm-hmm. Look where we're at. That's why we're close. So right now, even though they're, the odds are against them, where does Ramsey sit? I'm a, I Because Ramsey is not dancing. He doesn't dance <laughs> yeah, at the Ramsey party. Ramsey does not dance at the party. Because... <laughs> Ramses is okay. We talk about Ramsey. We got to get the. We got to get there. Here, while we talk about these, we got a. Oh god. We need a Ramsey song. We got a Ramsey song. You probably <laughs> heard it, but I gotta play it every time we talk about Ramses. Oh gosh. Ramses. There's is the nothing best. to talk about. Is the problem uh, well, what so about, far? What about uh, Ju- what's Julian's on the block? Jillian. Jillian is definitely a whiner. Not feeling her, but Ramses. Ramses is the best. He does not dance at the party. <laughs> He does not dance at the party. Ramsey's number one. He knows the secrets of desire. Okay. All right. So we're going to go to us. How we think about them right now. What do you? How do you think about Christmas? Christmas, uh, she's just probably athletic. That's about it. I don't, I'm not interested. What do you think about Paul? Like him. I Why do you gonna, like Paul? I like him because he knows the like game. We like two totally different people that, all the time. Well, we are two totally different people. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does that make sense? All right. I'm sorry. I don't like him. Did because I overstep don't think, my bounds? I don't even think she belongs in there. That's why I don't like him. I, I overstep my bounds. I apologize. <laughs> I just want to say I like who you like. <laughs> I don't like Bob. Because Ramsey's is not dancing. Ramsey's does not dance at the party. At the party. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, but uh, I stick to my guns. I like Paul. I like him. He's he's definitely, I like him for the show. I may not like him in person. What about like Matthew? Him. You like him? He, he's, he's, not, he's below the radar. He's, he yeah, seems he's cool. He's not getting much attention uh, right now. No, I think he's a chill dude. Dominique, there she is. Dominique, uh, I don't mind her. I mean, sh- she's really not showing she, one way or the other. I'm you can't you. judge her because you don't you. know her. I'm telling so, you, we're going to so, see her pop in the final five before you know it. I Bam, think there she's she is. strong. That's why she'll last longer. I don't think she'll make it all the way. Elena can't stand you, girl. You, it just all about yourself. If you would be watching the live feed, you really wouldn't you, be able to you're just dis- You're just disgusting. Jason. Jason. I respect you, man. I'm sorry. I, the gay slurs and all that. I, I didn't realize <laughs> your handkerchief was a... Was a man's man. It was man a man thing. My apologies. It's Jessica. A, it's, she is pretty. Pretty ruthless. I have no respect. You, you don't like her? No, I think look what she did to the little girl. Uh, no, I don't like her. Every and girl gay, in this room, right? every woman but, in this room is going hands down, thumbs down. You know I what? don't know if it's jealousy or real Well, no, this is, this is what happens. She's easy. They they're, say. they're literally calling no. her loose. They don't loose. know this woman from Adam. She could be a well, saint. What is Adam and Eve type? You season. get your liver spotted hands off my mother. <laughs> <laughs> She's a saint. So the thing is with her, I, you know, when you see somebody and they're that pretty, and then you see a personality flaw, then all of a sudden they're not that pretty anymore. Okay, but think about it. What if you're? You know what? That's that's sad. You're stereotyping that. So because no, you're if she's ugly, if she was ugly and had a personality flaw, you wouldn't be as hard on her. 
No, if she That's was not if cool. she was ugly and had a great personality, I would like her more. Baby. Sweetheart, <laughs> let's get real. I just was told she's not pretty, she's makeup pretty. She don't Says think she's pretty. Every woman in this room puts makeup Wait. on to look pretty. Yeah. Wait, so you don't think she's pretty? You don't think she no, has a pretty face? Come come this, tell us, come tell the audience what you think about it. We need a girl's perspective on sit, can, can yeah, she yeah. sit here for a second? We need a girl's perspective on uh these girls. Oh, Lord. So Jessica, what do you think about Jessica? I think that Jessica's a snake. But why? What has she done? What has she done? She's pretty. Or are you jealous because she's pretty? No, she's pretty, I guess. But um, I think that she's more makeup pretty and she's using her looks to get where she wants in the game. But that's what women do. They put makeup on to be pretty. I, you know what? I like, I like makeup. I like it better sometimes when they don't put makeup on. I like it better all the time. Because it's like cake. It's like almost cake. You know, it's caked on their face. But mm -hmm. to me, she to me, she's pretty without makeup. She looks like the type that's pretty right out the shower. You've seen her without makeup? No. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> I, maybe I will one day. <laughs> and I'll let you know. <laughs> what about what about uh what about Elena? I think she has a lot of money into her looks. You think some of that is fake? I think a lot of it is fake. What do you think she looks like without? I, look, I, I think that she has a really low self esteem, which is why she has so much money into her face. Wow! What do you think she's done to her face? Um, she's at least had her lips and cheeks done for sure. She's got a nose done. Botox. She got boobs. Probably a nose, Botox for sure. What do you think about Dominique? I don't really know. Because you don't based know off because her looks. But no, based off of just I mean we don't know much don't because, know, because we ain't seeing much. Show, they didn't even show her. What about Christmas? <laughs> I think she's gonna go far. I think that she's real quiet. I think yeah. Christmas is, you know, what she did today, Brandon. When she, when she opted out, that wasn't today, but when she opted out of actually doing a challenge, and then she goes back and she says, "Oh, you know, I don't want to do it because I don't want to let them see how much of a beast I am." She's smart. I, I think that she's scared. I think she's scared to actually physically do a challenge because there's too much riding and she's supposed to be a good challenge beast, but she's really not. I could see her being a bad, I, I could see her being a bad player when it comes physically. I don't care about her. I mean, they, you, you, just because she, her body looks like that does not mean she's a, be, a physical challenge beast. That doesn't matter. I agree a hundred percent, but I will say the, the biggest challenge beast in that game is uh, Pow Pow. And she's she's Alex? maybe gone. <laughs> and that's sad. That's really sad because she's good personality. She's extremely she she just got picked she got put with a bunch of boyfriend girlfriends. That's it. Honestly, I feel like I'm gonna be emotionally tied to some somebody in this show. And uh that's when things get juicy. Do you think it's gonna be Kevin? I think I like Kevin a lot, man. Uh one of those two for sure. Uh, I like Paul though. They're gonna keep on with that. Robert. I like you, Paul. I like Ramses, but he doesn't dance at the party. He doesn't dance at the party. Ramses is the best. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, thanks for listening. You know the drill. Subscribe, review us, and most important, join our Patreon group. Patreon.com slash Russell Hans. That's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Russell Hans. Until next time. I'm Russell Hance, and this is The Russell Hance Show.